Hello everybody, welcome to Red Toolhouse. Today, I want to do an update on a video titled, Can You Build Your House with Unstamped Slash Ungraded Lumber? Now we've actually talked about this a little bit in the past, but this is an update to that. This is to add more information. As you guys give me good feedback, then I'm trying to build a library of, of hopefully valuable resource to check out uh, for people in the future. So let me give you an update here. So in our most recent video concerning this subject, we talked about some exemption laws or special cases of uh, considerations, alternative building off, uh, codes there that specific states had on the books. What we detailed was New Hampshire, Rhode Island, Wisconsin, Tennessee, and New York. And we gave specific examples and links to all of those codes in those states. But now I'm ready to add another one, and that's North Carolina. So I want to give a shout out to Mark Felsher because he commented this week on one of our older videos and said, hey, here's, here's some code for North Carolina I think you'll find interesting. And he was right. So let me explain that real quick. I want to reference my notes here that I have, so I'm not making stuff up on the fly, of course. This document is found in a, on a website, and I'll link to it below, uh, North Carolina uh, State Building Code. And this is North Carolina Department of Insurance, Office of the State Fire Marshal, Engineering Division. And it's, it's titled Ungraded Lumber Code 2018 Residential Code, dated February the 13th, 2019. I think that's important to look at. And it's under Section R602.1. And it, it's kind of interesting. This is kind of stated. It looks like they do addendums to their code with kind of a question-answer thing. So the question is, can ungraded lumber be used if that lumber is cut from the homeowner's site? So the question is, if I'm building a house on my property, can I use ungraded, unstamped lumber if that lumber originated from my property? And the answer, according to this, is yes. It's an alternate material and method according to Section 105 of the 2018 Administrative Code. So I'll put a link for that as well, where it shows the Section 105. And it really doesn't go in and list all these alternate building options. It just says there is a broader variety that, if not clearly stated, then we'll accept with certain conditions. So it's almost like we're, we're going to leave a wide open slate here, and then people come into these alternate material options, then we just have to have an explanation and then a, a, a kind of... A, amend as they go along. So I assume that's what this happened in 2019, because 2018, of course, is when this administrative code was set. So February 13th of 2019 is when this exception was put in. But there are some additional restrictions to this, and I'll enumerate those. So the first restriction is the lumber, as I mentioned, has to come from the property where the house or the dwelling is going to be built. So if I had two tracts of land in two different locations, and I was going to build on one and pull lumber from the other, technically that wouldn't work. Now, you may be able to get an allowance in North Carolina on that, but it technically needs to come from the land where you're building the house. Well, consideration number two is the dwelling that's built with rough cut lumber from the property has to, the, the builder, or the, the individual has to reside in that house or a member of their immediate family has to reside in that house for a period of at least one year after the certificate of occup occupancy has been issued. So you have to live in it after you've built it for at least one year. And I would assume that's to keep guys from coming in, building something slipshod, selling it, and moving on somewhere else. So it's really kind of this idea almost of a, a homesteader or a larger track that where you build your house on your land and you plan to stay there for a while. Well, the third requirement is the lumber must be 19% moisture content or less at the time of construction. And the lumber must have either air dried for 90 days or been kiln dried. So it's kind of like two things linked together. So it's not just the moisture content, but I would assume that you'd have to show proof of air drying. So I cut the lumber on this day, I, I stacked it, I stickered it, and I air dried it for X amount of days really doesn't get into documentations you have to keep, but obviously take that upon yourself to document all of these type of details. If it's kiln dried, of course, you, you probably took it somewhere to put it in a kiln, then you should be able to get documentation from the individual who ran the kiln for you. So the fourth and final requirement, which I actually think should be at the top of the list, is the builder 
has to notify the building inspector prior to the lumber being cut. So if you look at that, you, you got to get the inspector on board prior to all of this, which makes sense because the inspector is most likely going to say, okay, we're going to come back and check the moisture content. We're going to come back and check the amount of air dry time, all of those type of things. So that's why you need to notify them in advance. And it, it sounds like they would need to come out and actually inspect where the lumber's cut from. Now, my goodness, you talk about being all over the board, what's the inspector really going to do, what's he expected to do, and what he actually does, I guess is maybe how you'd look at that, but is that they come back and they count stumpage and count logs and make sure you didn't bring a log in from outside. Do they mark the date that it's been milled and come back 90 days to make sure you haven't started building your project? Do they bring a moisture meter with them and stick it in the, the wood to check the moisture content of it? You know, are they going to come back in a year to make sure you're still living there? Yeah, you guys, I'm sure, are going to all have comments below as to you know, what you think inspectors, from your experience, are going to do and the due diligence associated with that. But I do find it interesting, and I'm glad North Carolina has that law. It gives people certain freedoms to be able to construct their own dwelling um, and not, not be beholden to store-bought lumber or transported lumber from out of state, however you look at it. So it's, it's kind of nice to have that option. Of course, with that idea of building your own house, you take on all that risk yourself. Now, as I've always footnoted when I do videos talking about this specific subject, is keep in mind, it's not just whether or not you building your own house out of your milled lumber is going to pass code. If you're going to get a loan and, you, and the bank's going to get involved, then they're probably going to have a say in that. If you're going to put homeowner's insurance on that dwelling, then they're going to probably have a say in that. So don't, if you're in North Carolina and you're watching this video, don't think, woo, free pass, I'm ready to go. You still want to talk to your insurance agent. You still want to talk to the bank and make sure that is a viable option. And it may be, there may be some additional provisions that they would require, but if it passes code, then maybe they play ball. But just keep that in mind. Well, I really appreciate the feedback we're getting on this type of subject, and I'd really like to continue doing so. In fact, what my plan is, if you guys in other states, if you have any information, send that to me. Comment below if you've got it. Email me if you want. You can go to the website, redtoolhouse.com, and use our form to email me. But make sure you include a link. I need a link to code so we can, you know, without a doubt, say, hey, here's what it says. It's you know, black and white. And we can list that. And the plan is to, to create a post on the website of the nation's map and have links on each state. And I'd really like that to be a resource for all of us in the future, all of us Sawyers, that say, hey, I wonder what the law is in my state for building a dwelling. Well, if we can get all these details together, then we can start to build this little repository of information. You click on the map, here's the links and the research that you guys have helped me do and culminate in one area. So if you have any information, let me know. I'll definitely give you credit. I'll post that information. I'll post your name on our website and as someone who helped collaborate with this effort. So let's see if we can get this going. Let's see if we can get all 50 states covered. Well, that's a quick one. We're going to go. Uh, time to feed the hogs and the tropical rainforest has yet to dry out since Fred came through. So we're going to probably not go fire up the mill for another day or so. But once things dry out, we'll get that going again. All right. Take care, everybody.